Hello everybody, this is Dr. Ariella coming to you to discuss this week topics of aggression and attraction. Um, some fascinating research that Myers continues to uh, discuss in his text. Um, one of the things that <clears throat> he discusses are three overriding or three um, major theories of aggression that he discusses on or starts to on page 345 um, biological um, drive of aggression um, the response to frustration and that um, aggressive behaviors are learned and so he gives evidence for um, each of these uh, what he calls big theories they're major theories overriding theories there are um, always other theories too that aren't discussed in textbooks but um, it, authors usually focus on the main ones so um, he uh, discusses several aspects of these different theories um, and uh, one, of, one of the things that I thought um, that I wanted to highlight was on page uh, 351 he says the the point is not that deprivation and social injustice are irre irrelevant to social unrest, but that frustration arises from the gap between expectations and attainments. So if you have an expectation that's frustrated or thwarted, you may um, act out with aggression, or if you um, think that you're needs are satisfied and you um, have or get what you want, then you probably won't act aggressively. Um, then he discusses on uh, uh, relative deprivation, um, an amazing uh, set of research that I hadn't read before on uh, TV, you know, people who started watching TV in cities where TV never existed before and um, the jump in crime. So that's really really fascinating research. Um, observational learning and social learning theory are have been widely studied. Um, he talks about um, punitive parents and spanking and things like that. When um, I worked for an agency where we uh, provided trainings for prospective foster and adoptive parents, we showed a video on spanking and um, with some experts talking about their research on spanking. and. Um, you know, it seemed pretty clear to me that spanking didn't have too many positive benefits, um, if any at all. So, um, you know, it's it's definitely controversial. Some people, you know, say, well, I was never hurt by spanking, and so, you know, I, I think it's an appropriate response to some situations, while others clearly see no reason to spank your children. So, it's definitely controversial. Um, under uh, influencing uh, aggression, he talks about aversive incidents and pain, uncomfortable heat, an attack or overcrowding. We can probably all relate to those and reacting with some kind of frustration or aggression. Um, uh, on page 357, he makes an important statement about um, correlations between uh, temperature and aggression that these are not causes of aggression, but they are correlations, um, but that there may be other contributing factors. And so um, it's really important to be able to have a good understanding of, of theories and perspectives, as well as, and that way we can also critique them and realize that almost all the time we need to be aware that there could be other um, confounding or contributing variables or factors. Um, on page 358, he discusses uh, handguns. Um, I, uh, I've read a lot about um, guns, gun ownerships, uh, gun ownership, and um, some different perspectives on this. So, you know, I have a concern that he's only citing one author about um, handguns. Um, and he also makes a statement that uh, I, I, don't, I think the way he worded it was... Um, a little unfortunate. Um, says guns not only permit violence, they can stimulate it as well. Um, 
and that uh, half of all murders are committed with handguns, or that handguns in homes are far more likely to kill household members than intruders. Mm, I think that's an unfortunate way of phrasing it, um, because uh, you know guns don't kill people. Kill people. It's the people who do. So again, I think there's. Uh, I have a concern about the wording of this discussion, and that there could be other factors as well, such as, you know, are people getting adequate training if they um, have guns and things like that. Um, media influences, pornography and sexual violence, a very interesting subject to me as I um, have integrated uh, feminism and, and uh, you know, women's perspectives, different perspectives in um, my research and analysis and on different topics especially in domestic violence and um, so I find you know the, these sorts of discussions fascinating one of the things that I was amazed about was um, his statement that pornography has become a bigger business than football basketball and baseball combined and that's amazing to me I had not seen that um, information before so he has an um, interesting, uh, great discussion about um, uh, distorted perceptions of sexual reality and some studies that have been conducted that seem to demonstrate that people who are exposed to unrealistic um, sexual information, such as pornography, um, that tend to be more aggressive and um, not as aware, perhaps, or not as willing to be aware as uh, they could be or otherwise would be to um, women's um, needs, desires, um, wants. So <clears throat> he's got some interesting research on here that I think is um, really fascinating um, about pornography. Uh, you know, again, controversial subjects. Some people think pornography is a, um, a, a healthy outlet for people, including men and women. So, you know, you just got to read people's information and uh, read it with a healthy dose of skepticism and, and with the understanding there are going to be more than one side to a story. Um, I'm not promoting pornography, but I'm also not saying that it's going to always be bad. I think there's research to prove various points. Um, the, he made a statement on page 363 um, about TV watching uh, that somebody estimated that if real people were murdered at the rate of TV characters, the population would be killed off in 50 days. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, that says a lot about television. Why is there so much violence on television? Uh, I don't know. You know, the number of uh, people that children see killed on television is amazing to me. <clears throat> so, you know, he has a discussion about why and how TV might influence um, behavior um, and the effects of TV on uh, thinking. I've uh, been at workshops where discussions are held about how t television affects young child's brains and it doesn't seem to affect it in positive ways. Okay, I will end here and then move on to uh, chapter 11.